the glory and the There is no one 
a beginning line without an end It is infinite Your name. 
Lele barra ba kosha da ba ya. Lando sa palana karando fada ba ba. Your name is a strong tower, Lord. The righteous run into and they are saved. Marado no fanda ba las kopa ya. Eshata kapala la mando se lele ba ya. Rando sheke de ba dan de de ba 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 ba. Your name is a strong and mighty tower. Your name. Oh, 
David says that I look to the heavens. Where does my help come from? It is a guarantee. It is an assurance. The name of the Lord. Reta Palabadosi. Mandelelebo Seke. Mashekelelebo. Rina Noske Balaba. Mandelele Cavadosi. Shata Kapa Baba. Mandolo Lobo Shaba. Rata Baba Baba Baba. Rina Lo Sekete. Ranta Baba Baba. Sheketeke Baba. Manto Copranaba. Mandelelebo Seke. Shata Kapa Baba. Rinda Doskeva. Mantelelebo Seke. Your name, O God, your name in this season. We speak your name, O Lord. Let up, Baba Baba Baba. Share the bossy in Jesus' name. 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 Let the ke Baba Baba Baba. Reno se ke Baba Baba. Manto ko Baba Baba. Let the bossy ke. Somebody call on the name of Jesus. Call on the name of Jesus. Mantelele Bosa. Raka Baba. Mashe Ederebosi. Is a strong and mighty tower. Your name is a shelter like no other. Your name. Let the nation sing it louder Cause nothing has the power to say To say your name says at the time when Jesus was crossing the sea with his disciples the Bible writes that Jesus slept and when he slept a storm came and the disciples were frightened by it and they did not have faith they had lost hope they thought that it has come to an end they thought that it is, it's over now. It is over. We cannot continue. Maybe, maybe in our present time, some of them will be writing their will. And maybe writing their final verdict. Maybe if it was in, in our era, some of them will be making calls. But they did not understand that there was a man, there was somebody who was in the boat with them. And their focus was not on Jesus. The Bible says that when Jesus got up, the first thing he did was to rebuke the storm. The evidence that the storm is over is when you realize that Jesus is in the boat. It is not when the storm is over itself. It is when you realize that Jesus is in the boat. And some of us, we think the storm is over when you, when you realize maybe my bank account 
is okay. Maybe when things are working out for you. But that is not when the storm is over. The storm is already over when you realize that Jesus is in the boat with you. And so I'm here to encourage you to let your eyes be open. Ask the Lord to open the eyes of your understanding to see Jesus in the boat.
making a prayer. How many times are we in the storm? Are we in the same boat with Jesus? But we cannot see him. We cannot see that he's in the boat. We cannot understand that he is there. It may seem like he's sleeping. It may seem like the, your, your, your roller coaster is coming to an end. It may seem like your bus is about to crash. It may seem like your destiny is being altered. It may seem like it is over for you. It may seem like your answers are not coming. But you're not seeing Jesus. You're not seeing Jesus in the board. You're not understanding that there is a King of glory in the board. You're not understanding that there is a Redeemer in the board. There is a God who heals the people. There is a God who rescues the people. There is a God who lifts the weary. There is a God who gives hope to the hopeless. There is the King of glory at the board. There is the Emperor of the universe in the board. Retebalabaso. And right now I charge your spirit to speak in tongues. If you can speak words, just tell him, Lord, open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, oh Lord. Where all I can see is you. Where all I can see is you, my God. Where my faith is without borders, Lord. Where my faith is being shaken, God. Help me to see you, Lord. Where there are voices in my head, Lord. Voices of failure. Voices of uncircumstance. Voices that I cannot make it. Voices that I'm a failure. Voices that there is nothing good that can come out of me. That there is nothing good that can come out of you. Lord, open the eyes of my eyes to see you, God. Rete paladoshe. There is nothing, God. There is nothing, Lord, that is better than you, Lord. There is nothing, Lord, compared to you, Lord. There is nothing, Lord. I would rather have you, Lord, in my boat, Lord, than any other thing. I'd rather have you, God. Oh, Rabba Keshelebo, Mancholobose, Leteke Baba Baba. As for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. Ekepete Lebasa, Rando Kopolovaya, Sharanda Lebo, Eseba Baba Baba Baba, Masheke Lebo, Retede Baba 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 Baba. Where you see a mountain, eh, Paladose, Mantelebose, you see Jesus, you see Jesus, you see Jesus, you see Jesus, Eleko Padaba. When the doctors say no, you see Jesus. When your boss, when your boss is not in line with you, you see Jesus, you see Jesus, you see Jesus. When everyone is seeing failure, you see Jesus, you see Jesus. When everyone is seeing a wrecked boat, you see Jesus. When everyone is seeing a crashing plane, you see Jesus. E paladoshe, mare makoshe, elele baba baba baba, sheke palada ba e, e rano se ala, mandoro no boshe. Somebody just set your gaze on Jesus. E kapalane, la kapa baba baba baba, mandoro no boshe, sheke palada ba, mandele lele boshe, shaka pa baba baba, reke pa ya ba. Rabba, 
In every storm, there is something that drives it. When you are in the sea, and you see the sea is, is unpleasantly shaking the boat, you need to understand that there are forces behind every storm. The only thing that the disciples saw, they saw that the waters were moving. They saw that the waters were moving, but they didn't understand that in every storm, there is, a, there is a force behind it. And when Jesus awoke from his sleep, he rebuked the wind. He did not rebuke the waters quickly. He rebuked the wind. And so right now, I, I, I want you to pray and rebuke every wind. Every wind that is causing a storm in your family. Every wind that is causing a storm in your education. Every wind that is causing a storm in your ministry. Every wind that is causing a storm in your finances. Oh, Rabaka de Debose. Where your eyes can only see a storm. Every wind in the name of Jesus. At the mention of the name Jesus. Every wind must bow. And every time confess that is Lord. Every forces of the wind. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. we are dealing with prayer and sometimes when we pray we do not get to the root the cause of everything that we is happening to us today my spirit is judged out to encourage someone out there what can the righteous do if our foundations are faulty if the forces behind the storm are still standing my brother my sister you're going to struggle but I'm here to encourage you that there is Jesus in the boat all you need to do is to, to shift your gaze to shift your focus on Jesus to shift your focus on Jesus to be silenced. Noises that you cannot make it. Noises that you're incompetent. Noises that you, you're not capable of doing what everyone is doing. Noises that you need, you need to rise up to the standards of this world. Noises that you need to up your game. You need to upgrade. You need to look like the dot com. You need to be someone. Noises of proving a point to someone. Noises of arrivalism, of thinking that I have arrived. You need to shut every noise in your mind and allow the Spirit of the Lord to lead you. And that is why today we ask Him to open the eyes of our heart. If you've always been praying this prayer, today just connect your mouth to your heart and gaze unto the Lord and tell Him, Lord, open the eyes of my heart to see you, Lord. Lord, I want to see you, God. I want to see you, Lord. I can assure you that the enemy will keep hovering around. He will keep saying things to your mind. He will keep speaking words to your mind. He will keep reminding you of your past. He will keep reminding you of the things that you have done. He will keep reminding you that you cannot move on. That God cannot forgive you. That God cannot, cannot forgive you. But I'm here to remind you.
to encourage you to change your focus on Jesus, to change your focus on the King of Glory, to change your focus on the Emperor of the Universe, to see that there is God that is still seated on the throne. Come on, somebody pray. Pray, pray in the name of Jesus. Remano sheke baya, mateke ba 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 ba, sheke bala la ba de sotala, lande ki bara do sele ba 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 ba, manto la la boche. Even when the voices in my head keep telling me to quit, keep telling me to quit, to quit my job, to quit my marriage, to quit my ministry, my Lord, I set my gaze on you. Every wind, the Lord. Rapakade, shaka pada ba 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 ba, ma sheke dele ba ba ba, shele le bo sheke pala la ba ba, mandele le le bo sheke ba 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 ba, mandere kapala la ba she, mandele le bo shele ba te, shara ba 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 ba, ereta ba 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 de kosha la ba, mandele le ba de fandele kosha ya, ma shala la la ba nuzi ya ba, re ba 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 ba. This is not just an illusion. This is not just an illusion. Mando kopala la ba 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 ba. My God is real. God is real. He is there. He is there. When you call unto Him, He answers. He answers. He answers the cry. Mando lolo boshi. Reta paladeka. Mante ke palado. Mandelelele bosi, mashere kabaya, mashelele bote, rakata kababa baba baba, eshelelele bosi, manto kobo bobo bobo bobo, eshike pata pate, manto lololo bosi. When you feel like your system is failing, when your organs are failing, and you go to Google, and Google tells you that you have 16 days to die. Look at Jesus in the boat. When you feel a migraine, when you feel pain in your stomach, look at Jesus. Look at Jesus, the healer. Look at Jesus, the restorer. Look at Jesus, the one who answers the prayers. Re ba 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 ba. Sheke pala no se, mandele kose. Re ba la la ba ba ba. Sheke pada dosi ne, mandele de de bosi. Set up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy. When you tell him that, open the eyes of my heart. To see him, to see him do what? What do you want to see him do? To see you highly lifted up in your glory, God, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love.
see Jesus sitting on the throne. Jesus, the Lamb of God, holy is your name. Holy is your name.
God is better than our Lord Jesus Christ. get to to have Jesus with you the most important thing is having Jesus with you how many of us have, have been in journeys or you're preparing for a flight or a journey to move somewhere all you can think about the things the things that you need to use on the way the things that you feel will protect you some of us even get security don't forget that Jesus is the security that you need when you wake up in the morning the first thing, what is the first thing that you turn to? Is it your cell phone in the morning? Or you turn to Jesus? The one who has given you the breath. The one who has sustained you in the night. Maybe a cockroach would have crawled into your ear. But he has preserved you even in the night. What is better than Jesus? There is nothing better than you, Lord. There is nothing better than you, Lord. There is nothing, nothing is better than you, Lord. There is nothing. that you sing to him. Lord, there is nothing better than you. Lord, there is nothing better than you. Lord, there is nothing. Nothing is better than you. Come on, tell him. Lord, there is nothing
I put you in front, O oh Lord. In front of my melodies, I put you in front, O oh Lord. In front of my finances, I put you in front. In front of my children, I put you in front of my finances. I put you in front of my ministry. Lord, there is nothing better than you, Lord. I put you in front of my ministry, God. I put you in front. In this journey, O Lord, I put you in front. Just like Moses said, Lord, without your presence, we cannot go, my God. And so, Lord, I put you in front. Because, Lord, we put you in front, Lord. We win, Lord. Victory is ours, Lord. Victory is ours, Lord. Randa There is nothing better than you. Lord, there is nothing better than you, Lord. There is nothing. Nothing is better than you. is not bare, break forth into singing and cry aloud, thou that is not travail with child, for more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, saith the Lord. Enlarge the place of thy tent, and let them stretch forth the curtains of thine habitations. Spare not, lengthen thy cords, and strengthen thy stakes. 
For thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left, and thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles, and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. Fear not, for thou shalt not be ashamed, neither be thou confounded, for thou shalt not be put to shame, for thou shalt not forget thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth, and shalt not remember the reproach of thy widowhood any more. For thy maker is thine husband, the Lord of hosts is his name, and thy redeemer the Holy One of Israel. The God of the whole earth shall he be called. For the Lord hath called thee as a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit, and a wife of youth, when thou wast refused, saith the God, thy God. For a small moment have I forsaken thee, but with great masses will I gather thee. In a little wrath I hid my face from thee for a moment, but with everlasting kindness will I have mercy on thee, saith the Lord thy Redeemer. For this is as the waters of Noah unto me. For as I have sworn that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth, so have I sworn that I would not be wroth with thee, nor rebuke thee. For the mountains shall depart and the hills be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from thee, neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed, saith the Lord that hath, mad, that hath mercy on thee. O thou afflicted, tossed with tempest and not comforted, behold, I will lay thy stones with fair colors, and lay thy foundations with sapphires, and I will make thy windows of agates, and thy gates of carbuncles, and all thy borders of pleasant stones. And all thy children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of thy Amen. children. In righteousness shalt thou be established. Thou shalt be far from oppression, for thou shalt not fear, and from terror, for it shall not come near thee. <coughs> Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fall for thy sake. Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire, and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work, and I have created the waster to destroy. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue against thee shall prosper and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shall condemn this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their righteousness is of me saith the Lord my father you instructed and where you instruct we do and Lord you declared <coughs> that this day would be a day where you spoke of what it means to listen and to obey. So Lord, we start with the simple instructions and you, you said that as partners, and we're in this ministry where you said every single one of us 
is expected to be a partner. It means that none of us are exempt from the instruction. So Lord, this day I pray that we return to the place of instruction. We return to the place of obedience. That you will show us the truly excellent way. And we will start with the simplicity of your word. You have said declare it. And so this day we have declared it. And we shall declare it. <clears throat> Isaiah 60. Arise, shine, for thy light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Lift up thine eyes round about and see, for they gather, all oh, they gather themselves together from afar. And thy daughters shall be nursed at thy side. Then thou shalt see and flow together, and thine heart shall fear and be enlarged, because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. The forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. The multitude of camels shall cover thee. The dromedaries of Midian and Ephah, all they from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and incense, and they shall show forth the praises of the Lord. All the flocks of Kedah shall be gathered together unto thee. The rams of Nebaioth shall minister unto thee. They shall come up with acceptance on mine altar, and I will glorify the house of my glory. Who are these that fly as a cloud, and as the doves to their windows? Surely the isles shall wait for me, and the ships of Tarshish first, to bring thy sons from far, their silver and their gold with them, and to the name of the Lord thy God, and to the Holy One of Israel, because he hath glorified thee. And the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls, and their kings shall minister unto thee. For in my wrath I smote thee, but in my favor have I had mercy on thee. Therefore thy gates shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day nor night, that men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles, and that their kings may be brought. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Yea, those nations shall be utterly wasted. The glory of Lebanon shall come unto thee, the far tree, the pine tree, and the box together, to beautify the place of my sanctuary. And I will make the place of my feet glorious. The sons also of them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto thee. And all they that despise thee shall bow themselves down at the soles of thy feet, and they shall call thee the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Whereas thou hast been forsaken and hated, so that no man went through thee, I will make thee an eternal excellency, a joy of many generations. Thou shalt also suck the milk of the Gentiles, and shall suck the breast of the kings. And thou shalt know that I, the Lord, am thy Savior and thy Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. For brass I will bring gold, and for iron I will bring silver, and for wood brass, and for stones iron. I will also make thy officers peace, and, thy, and thine exactors righteousness. Violence shall no more be heard in thy land, wasting no destruction within thy borders but thou shalt call thy walls salvation and thy gates praise the sun shall no be no more thy light by day neither for brightness shall the moon give light unto thee but the lord shall be unto thee an everlasting light and thy god thy glory thy sun shall no more go down neither shall thy moon withdraw itself for the lord shall be thine everlasting light and the days of thy morning shall be ended thy people also shall 
be all righteous. They shall inherit the land forever, the branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that I may be glorified. A little one shall become a thousand, and a small one a strong nation. I, the Lord, will hasten it in his time. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Find a mic. <clears throat> the day of instruction, indeed. We're going to begin with instruction. For many, <clears throat> and I say this with understanding because even I include myself in the many, and the Lord has shown me that we are many. The instruction is difficult. We had the word, we had the word that was spoken on Sunday, we had the word that was spoken on Saturday, and then we received very specific instruction in this week as we go into the partners we can. But for many, it has been difficult because we see what is happening, <clears throat> and the attack is on our ability to follow the instruction because our victory is in the instruction. So, Mr. Kurut, I want you to between you and Sissy, we are going to dance. We're not just going to say, I rejoice in the Lord, and we're not moving. We're not going to say, I dance before the Lord, and we are not dancing. <clears throat> Over here. Me, my job is to back up and to, for this session, to back up and to just dance. And if you are where you are, if you are in a space where you can get up, do it. Just get up. Get up. Yes, some of us are having problems that you don't even see where you're going to dance from. You, you log into this, these sessions because you, you are waiting to hear the Lord tell you a very specific word about how he's going to deliver you at, to give you a date for the end of the problem. And all you heard was dance. If we are truly going to learn to listen and obey, it is the place of instruction. <clears throat> So the instruction you receive, you do it. So that this is a demonstration. I'm doing it for myself as well. Because deliverance, victory is in the instruction of the Lord. We received this because the Lord came and said, you have not rejoiced indeed. <clears throat> and when we rejoiced at his word, his vessel released a word of release, a word of victory, a word of blessing. And so for, for those of us who maybe have not been paying attention, go back and listen to the service of Sunday. Because the Lord spoke to us at every point. He knew what we were going through. He knew what was happening. He knew it at the time when he said, go on a fast because there is something coming. <clears throat> and then when you completed it, he said, victory has come. And now <laughs> he knows what is afoot. And he says, I know what is happening out there. I know how tight the things are getting. But dance. 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 Huh? So before we do anything, if you have not yet danced this week, consider this your engine turning. If you have not yet released yourself 
dancing for the Lord. Today, let's do it. This is where I give you, don't listen to the voice, eh? listen to the heart. Eh? Kubanga ye mulunji atuwaje ebirunji binji ye bazibwe mukama atajuluka echitibwa chideri yesu kubanga ye mulunji atuwaje
ourselves up to that place. We are getting to that place where your spirit is finally alive with the truth of what God has said. Because if he has said dance, you know there's a reason to dance. You may not see it, but for him he knows it. Because he has purposed for you something to dance about. So even if you don't see it, yes, you're looking around, the things seem to be bigger than they were the week before. They seem to be bigger than even when he said first. But now he's saying you dance. You praise. You let out a sound of joy. So you do it. If you went quickly to fast, you do not be slow to dance. Do not be slow to dance. So may the Holy Spirit wash over you with the joy that he has released for a dance. Lord God, but you have come back 
and you have said now now begin to see begin to see what I mean no weapon formed against you shall prosper so dance he says arise and shine how shall you arise and shine if your countenance is sorrowful so he says dance Worship your Father. Worship your Lord. And join heaven. Just join heaven. Just join heaven. And dance before the Lord. she's waiting for there are things she's waiting for behold them behold them and then dance eh? so you behold your answer you behold that moment when you are there just like oh shut if people think that I am praising God I am praising you today shut and you are smiling. If there was someone who had disturbed you at work today, you smile now. If there was someone who had sent an evil report, you smile now. Let them see you dancing. Let them see you dancing. And let the enemy be confounded. I like, I thought these people were done. But let him see you dancing. Most importantly, let Jesus see you dancing. Eh? He said dance. It cannot be so hard. And I know how hard it has been. I know it. They've been trying to steal your groove. Eh? He has been trying to tell you that instruction doesn't matter. But hear the Lord, and today you follow.
Aleluya. 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 Él le ve solo lo bochanda. Oh, how I pray that it has done you as much good as it has done me. You know, I don't know whether it's a fortunate thing or unfortunate thing. But I guess I'm one of those people who who don't sit down and learn by being told. I have to first experience. So, may I arrive at the place where I am simply told. We are told and we what? We do. It works faster that way. And surely there is less sorrow when we pay attention to instruction. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord once again. Hallelujah. I truly pray that you have danced and you have sweated while you do it. If you are, you are in a place where you are unable to do it, may the Lord give you an opportunity tonight. Do it with the children. And I know if you're not yet home, the category can be that the children are not eh? they've done exactly what you didn't want them to do and so before you even before you have the grace to say let us dance you have already quarreled with someone <clears throat> so now we speak ahead of you and say Holy Spirit may you go forth tonight Jesus Christ in your might, in your power, in your grace in your kindness, in your forgiveness in your mercy make room for your people to be obedient to the instruction upon us in this week and in this time, in this hour. That where they have, we have been in a place of disobedience to your word, where we have been in a place of difficulty to do or to hear, where we have been convinced that maybe it's not important to enough, Lord Jesus, in this day we ask for a special grace. Let there be a special grace available to us that we will not wait an extra minute to do as you have said. That we may experience the full power, the full glory of a fulfilled instruction. For we do not see in full, we only see in part. But we have said if we can only see, if what we see is full of glory, imagine what it is in full. For if the glory Moses experienced at the mountain, which was the old covenant, made him put a veil over his face. Oh, how glorious is our Jesus. And here he is and he says, dance. Here he is and he says, declare the words of my lips. And so we ask for a special grace for those who are especially feeling the weight of oppression, the weight of depression, the weight of sorrow. For those who have lived under a blanket of sorrow for so long, they do not know how to be any other way. And so when they hear instructions that go against that weight of sorrow, they are quick to give up. But Lord, we ask for a special, special grace. For a lifting, Lord. Clarity that goes forth, O oh God. A breaking indeed. That as, have, as you have declared freedom. As you have released battalions, O oh God. That the enemy is chased so far away from your people. That they will not hear the words of the enemy in their ears. That even the retreating enemy will not be able to speak to them. But they will be free to revel in the love you have lavished over them.
and in the joy you have released. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Hallelujah. My speaking will be little because surely I know that we are we are past the hour. But I the things that the Lord began to show me, especially about listening and obeying. And he showed them to me in myself first. Of course. And so I know so deeply the difficulty that we face. But I also know the joy that comes with being obedient. And that's really where the battle is. When he speaks of prayer, many of us, we want to come to the place of prayer. And when we think of praying, we desire to pray like the intercessors that we see. We want to pace for an hour. We want to say, Lord, I have spent this much time. I woke up at three. I prayed. I woke up at six. I prayed. I was up at midnight. I prayed. And we forget that the real test of our prayer is in our obedience. It won't matter how long you prayed if you fail to obey what God tells you to do. And there are those of us who, who count the hours and not the instruction. There are times you go to God and within 15 minutes of your prayer, he has answered. He has told you exactly what to do. But because what he has told you to do <laughs> wasn't exactly what you wanted to hear. You discard it and then spend another 30 minutes asking for an answer. Depending on who you are and what level of maturity he expects from you, there are some, since they are still babies, that he will do what? He will repeat. There are some of us who he expects to be mature. And he will first keep quiet for you and until you come back. I say, but God, but he says, uh uh, listen, the first time that I did what? I spoke. And so we've been dealing when we spoke of <clears throat> the relationship and the fellowship that first week and her coming to prayer with that understanding that you're creating a relationship with Jesus. You're cre creating a relationship with God. And so coming into, into prayer with that, constantly coming into prayer with that knowledge that you're coming not just to speak. Because if you all think of your relationships, if you have a relationship with someone, whether it's your husband, your siblings, your what, and they're always the ones talking, but you never get a chance to say, what's on your heart. For sure you're not close to that person. Even if you say you love them, you're not close to that person. Because they don't give you a chance. They're like, okay, the thing on my heart, I have not what? Said. If you called your friend to meet because there was something on your heart you wanted to do what? To say. But when they came, they spent the next three hours talking about themselves, their self, themselves, themselves, whatever English word is there. Hmm? And you, you didn't get, you're the one who asked to meet. But you didn't get a chance to even speak. Let them do it once, twice. If you're the patient kind, they might even do it for a whole year. But for sure, you would have found someone else to do what? To talk to. And very soon, that friend will start saying, as you never call me, we don't hang out this, as much these days. Right? For sure. So those of you saying, but God doesn't talk to me and what? Hmm. You just, just think about it. You know, you look like that person. God, say, God has told me, God has told me. Like, God has not told me anything. Have you listened? 
have even given him a chance to do what? To speak. The word he gave me for listening is the KJV word. To hearken. Hearken unto my voice. So the, the, the way we use the word listen, it's been, I believe it's been diluted. I am not an English master. But I have heard people use the word listen. And when they say listen, it's to pay attention with what? Pay close attention. That's why they say, they don't say hear. They say listen. Because when you, when you are listening, your mind is on the matter that you are hearing. Because I can hear. You can hear. There are many things. And when you're in a room, you can hear many things at the same time. But when you purpose to listen, your mind is focused on what you are hearing. Because the intent is to understand and learn and internalize. So the word he gave me is the word that the KJV uses, which is to hearken. Hearken unto my voice. Meaning that you follow it, you, you look for it, you are drawn to it. But you, do, you, you are drawn to it with the purpose of doing as you hear. Of being obedient. That's really what it means. He says, <clears throat> if you love me, you will obey me. And he said it so many times. He said, the sheep, my sheep, know my voice. How do we, he's, he's confident. How does he know that they know his voice? Because they obey his voice. So we cannot be talking about prayer and we fail to talk of obedience. Because that, what is, that is what broke in the garden and that is what Jesus restored. And that's why he spoke again and again. I do only as I see my father do. I do only as I see my father do. It is the place of I have heard, I have seen, and now I do. I will know that you are my children if you love as I do. How do I know that you love me? You obey my commands. So while we are here talking about prayer, this, how do I, you know, maybe the expectation was there was a 10-point program, eh? Do this, do this, do this, and then by the end of it, ah, fire just, you'll be a, a fire brand. It is in obedience. It is in obedience. where he says, forgive. I mean, they are certain basics. So you open the word and you read it because it is the basics. We are going to see in Corinthians where he says, I have to go back again and go over these things. Like, should, I cannot call you mature. <coughs> Is that where we were in First Corinthians 3? Yesterday. Hmm? I want to call you mature, but I cannot call you mature because we have to go over these things again. Mm -hmm. but he is kind and gracious he goes over it again and again because even in Peter he says I know you know these things but I will speak of them again mm -hmm. so reading the Bible going through it is to learn the things that God has already said because there are things we don't have to spend time praying over. If the Lord has already said, this is the way to go. If the Lord has already said, forgive. There's no need to spend a whole week fasting on the matter of what? 
whether you should forgive your husband or not. There's really no need. Maybe the first is to break that, that thing in you to be able to do what? To forgive. It is not to question whether you're going to forgive or not. It is to deal with that, that stronghold that is making it difficult for you to what? To forgive. But you're not asking. So that's not a question. Oh God, do I forgive this person? No. You are going to forgive them. That's it. That's the the basic. The first is not going to be, you're not going to spend hours, Lord, should I honor my parents or not? No, if you're in my place of rest, certain things, they are just what? Basics. Hmm? It is like, have I bathed? <laughs> Before you leave the house, you make sure that you are what? Before you enter your bed, you make sure that you have what? Like those, that this is just a, a basic. Hmm? Am I going to comb my hair? It's not a question of combing the hair. It is a what? A basic. Hmm? I'm going to work. Should I wake up or not? That's not something you, you seek the Lord on. So read the word and discover the basics. So that you, 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 you spend less time haggling over basics and come into the place of maturity. Dealing with what we call bones. Eh? There are matters now where you're like, okay, I have forgiven. I have done this. I have, eh? all of that is in place. Now, Lord, how do we deal with these things? Okay? Because when the basics are at hand, your hearing, your listening, your obedience improves. And when you are obedient to the Lord, it gives him not only joy, but it gives him territory in your life. He spends less time standing in front of the accuser and saying, Bananke, get away. Eh? You spend less time. Because many of us are stuck in that place. We are taking a step forward like this. The accuser comes in front of us. So we first plead the blood of Jesus. I'm sorry, I forget. Woo! Mm? 20 days are spent. When? By obedience in even just one instruction. You can gain leagues. Leagues. Things that you thought could not be dealt with are dealt with. By obedience. Okay? So what we pray for and say, Lord, teach me indeed to hearken to your voice. But after we have said that prayer, we begin to hearken. And many of us are not used. We are waiting for the Lord to speak to us here. But you see, here is still full of many things. Eh? So before your mind is clear, he has given you the word. But he has given you leaders. But we have leaders in front of us. They say something. And you, don't, you, you, you hear it, but you don't do it. And you're waiting for God to first speak to you. But your mind is clogged. Your mind is clogged by so many things. So start. If you're struggling with hearing God in private, you start by doing the public what? Instructions. Start there. And see how God does what? Conquers for you. See how God conquers for you. And when you do it, you do it in private. Because we don't always get the opportunity to do it together. But you do it in private. And when you do it in private, 
you win over something in you. You continue to break that place of pride. Because the inability to listen is pride. You think you know better. Even before God. You think you know better. How do I know this? I told you. When, you, when God uses you as your own example, it is not nice. So I am also praying for that place of maturity where I no longer have to be the example <laughs> that he uses. I say, Lord, let me learn this one just by hearing. You don't have to go through it. But I know what the Lord is dealing and breaking in my life. So I also just submit to the, the journey. But I had a strange conversation with him. <laughs> and only just last night. It has been a rather difficult, and I put this mildly. It's difficult. And there are things you've prayed and you've hoped. You know, on Saturday when Prof said, some of us, you know, you've believed God for a matter. But it has not come. They gave you a word, and you're still there counting years. You're like, when you received the word, you were like, yes, Lord, I receive, Lord. Now, Lord. And you had all the faith for what? For it. There was no doubt in your mind that it was going to happen. Day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, day six, day seven, day eight, day nine, day ten, day... 300, how many days pass? Year one passes. You say, okay, next year. This is it. Same thing passes. Then you wake up and you're like, ah, is it getting better? You actually ask him, is it getting better? But the word still remains. And so, because there are some of those things in my life, and one of them has become a bit dicey and difficult to handle. And there was this instruction of dancing. But I could feel the attack. I could feel the oppression. And I would say, Lord, there is... It is like there is a wall that is squeezing and I'm pushing against it and I hear what you are saying, but it is like I have no strength to arise to this instruction. And so I was listening to another minister speak and I listened and, and I was like, okay, should I go into a fast? Maybe I should go into a fast. And because I was sitting next to my husband, I was like, yeah, tomorrow we should what? I think I'm going to start a fast, a long fast. And he looked at me, and he gave me that look of... And so I answered the question that he did not... I said, no, I've not heard God, but I feel like I need to, to do something. Anyway... Because I've been given the best husband in the world, he said nothing. <laughs> he said nothing and just continued. <laughs> it was like this one and her and her things. <laughs> Let the Lord deal <laughs> this matter. Anyway. And so as I I pondered what I was about to do. And also pondered the reaction I had been given. I really began to think about the matter. Because I have been praying over the, the scriptures. But that... that <laughs> ah, anyway. Whatever he did, he did in the night. Because when I awoke, I said, now... Why have I chosen the fast? Not that fasting is bad. No. The, when he said fast, he came and said fast. Didn't I enter it willingly? Very willingly. 
I was arranging the whole family. What? You don't want to? Eh? We must, we must, we must. Now, when he says dance, what's so hard? Hmm? What's so hard? Hmm? Because one feels like I am working. You get? There is an action which makes you feel like you are what? Working. Like you are earning what God has to do what? Give you. And when he comes and gives instructions that don't speak to that place of works in your life, you discard them. And even when he gives you the one of that feels like a work, like I have actually done something. See me, I am fasting. That is where you go. See me, I am what? Fasting. See me, how long I pray. See me. It is what? Pride. Hmm? Oh, God shall not answer us. Me, he answers me because, eh? Hey, hey. I tell you, he gave me the best husband in the world. And he teaches me about works. Because some of us are like me. We like working. Huh? We are the guys who enter the garden early, with the vineyard early. Then we see other people entering, you're like, ha. My reward is going up, up, up. Surely I've been at it longest. Then they pay you the same and you start. Mwah, 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 mwah. It's not fair, not fair. <laughs> eh? The other one, they said dance. And they what? They danced. For you, you despised the instruction. So, beware of the places you despise instruction. Because simple things can deliver you, let me tell you. Simple things can deliver you. There are things, yes, where he will tell you fast. Huh? Go eat no food days on end. Think of Naaman, who traveled all the way from Syria to the enemy's territory. A commander in the Syrian army. But his problem was enough for him to go and say, Baba. And they told him there's a prophet. And he went. When he got there, Elisha says, No, you go and dip yourself seven times in the Jordan. And he looked at him and said, and they are cleaner things. They just said, dip yourself seven times. And we've had this sermon before, haven't we? Hmm? How many things have you looked at and said, God, Oba, no. Hmm? Where well, it says, buy a gift. Ah, ah, a gift. Remember when we were giving gifts the crossover? Let me share my experience here. <laughs> As I said, Lord, may the foolishness that I have exhibited end in me, but may it break other people's what? Foolishness. So they said buy gifts, right? So we went about buying gifts. I got the name of the person. I said, oh, I looked, I looked. I said, great. And I began to ponder on the gift. My husband also got his, and forgive me, he's the one I've been given. So if you're over here saying my husband, he's the one I have been what? Given. And even him, he knows he's the one that I have been given. The two of us, may the Lord use us. So he gets his name. And in true fashion, he even refuses to tell me who it is. So I don't know who he's gifting. I'm like, okay. 
I think about the gift. And then one day, I wake up with a scent in my nose. That's the first, I know the smell. It's a scent, it's a perfume. And I know that it's not a perfume that I wear. And I knew, I just woke up and I knew that this was what I was going to, to buy. This was the gift. And as I woke, I even knew where I was going to, to buy the gift. So I went with the money that I had available. Huh? And I went to the shop, picked, and I looked. I, you know where the lady picks? They pick for you perfumes, and they're looking at you like, what's the problem? I'm like, mm, it's not this one. It's not this one. It's not this one. Uh, this is not the one. Until the scent that I had woken up with came to me. And I went home very happy. Now, when I got home, like a day or two later, I discovered the gift my husband was giving. Ah, I said, Lord, now the comparison said, now see. You just see what he has done. Look what he's doing. Hmm? And so I began to doubt the what? The instruction. Based on what? Pride. Was it any other thing? It was just, how will they see me? That's all it was. There was no other. They don't even, there's no sugar coating it. It was pride. So I really struggled. And began to think of what I could add. And the Holy Spirit began his work. Said, Richard, don't do it. Don't do it. Hadn't we had the... Just recently before that, we had had the permissible, acceptable, and perfect will. Eh? Someone. We had had it. And I had been there saying, yes, underlined eh? notes were many in my book. <laughs> no, you see, you're looking at perfect. You're, you're looking at the big things. And the Holy Spirit kept saying, Richard, don't do it. And now I had made a specific prayer. Because the Holy Spirit will not. He is not rude. He is not belligerent. He is not a bully. He will not force you. He will not just know that that is not him. But I had asked him in sincerity. And I said, Lord, please do not let me. Where you see I'm making a mistake, you, you put it in my body. I have prayed that prayer. He said, if my mind is clogged, you put it in my what? Body. That I will know. Hmm? That if I can't, like, you know when you're so full of whatever it is, you can't hear. I just said, Lord, just, if ever, and now you say, I said that prayer long before. Not at that moment. I was not praying that prayer. I said it long, I, in no space of, Lord, don't let me. Lord, I only want to serve you. Lord, I shall. Mm. That is when I said that prayer. So we had agreed and we had been working. So that evening coming back for the crossover, I was still looking at how to do what? Add, top up, increase the gift. To add on what he had instructed. Because surely I knew better. Hmm? Surely he did not understand the situation. So I walked into the supermarket because we, we were on our way back from a long trip. And I go into the market and I begin to look at things and I'm like, okay, since I'm getting this, I should, I should. You just know. I thank you, Lord, for answering prayer because he answered it very well. The shaking began. You know, I was about to have a heart attack. As I walked through the market, like doof, 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 doof. the heart is beating, the trembling, started, the tremor began in my hands. And it's like I picked something off the shelf and I was like, Lord, What's happening? I'm about to just drop dead at this point. I just said, Richard, don't do it. Don't do it. I insisted. I am the one who asked for the side. I said, give me this sign that I am doing something wrong. But even when I got the sign, I was still so hard-headed and willing to do what? Be disobedient. 
And I hope you are looking at yourselves and just saying, Lord, we are sorry. Quickly. Hmm? Because if I'm an example, and he says you're an example, I, if it is me, I'll just go slapping hands. Pa, 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 because I slapped my own head. But anyway, as I walked to the count, so when the, trembling, the shaking got too much, I put back that one. I said, okay, let me just pick this. So I had picked and walked. As I walked to the counter, Holy Spirit, I apologize again. I dared to even ask, okay, can I just take this? And he gave me a wonderful answer. He said, if you want. <laughs> just know the whole someone flashed back. I got back the things, put them back. The trembling got even worse. I got back. You know, guys, were looking. you can imagine what's happening in the supermarket. People are like, what's happening with this woman here? I got back into the car. I was shaking. My stomach was hurting. My chest was beating. I was like, oh, God, what was I supposed to, what was I about to do? I was just like, I arrived. Just no. I said, Lord, this thing here. I apologize. But now imagine. I wish I could say that that was the last time. Hmm? I wish I could say it was the last time. However, they've become fewer. That at least is a victory. They have become what? Fewer. But I walk towards the day that I truly hearken unto the voice in everything. Hearken unto his voice. Because when I arrived and I listened to the someone that was given at the crossover, I understood why he had given me a perfume for this person. And I knew exactly what his prayer and the declaration he was making over her life. And my repentance was that I was about to damage. I was about to soil. I was about to defile the word of God. Hmm? Can you imagine? All because of what? Pride. Hmm? So I hope you see that there are things where you, you're calling it a struggle, but really you just need to let go. That's why they say we are in these books. If you look at the books we've been reading since the beginning of the year, there are some really tough books. They are tough. They are tough to hear. The things that are being said, they are tough to hear. But the Lord is saying, get rid of these things. Get rid of these things. He's saying that pride will stop you from hearkening to my voice. Fear will stop you from hearkening to my voice. Sin will stop you from hearkening to my voice. So he says, that's why he says, he comes and he tells you, get rid of them. So don't look at the, the scriptures we are reading. Don't look at the sermons we are receiving. And discard them. Because he's saying, hearken to my instruction. And Judith preached about Esau and Jacob. And she gave an alternative scenario. Imagine that Rebecca and Isaac had been on the same page. Had been on the same page and understood the word of God. Because God does not leave one out. They were both his. Both Esau and Jacob were his. So much so that when the Israelites were coming out of Egypt, 
He said, do, these people do not fight them because they are your brothers. Even if Esau wanted to kill Jacob, that is where they came from. He said, this one, the Edomites, leave them. They are your brothers. That land I've given them is theirs. Hmm? Is theirs. The Midianites, the land was not given, their land was not given to the Israelites. The Amalekites, their land was not the portion that had been given to the Israelites. But why were they eventually broken and destroyed? Because for them, they failed to value what God had put in Israel. So Midian came and defiled them. That is how Balak came into the, the picture. Hmm? Balaam and Balak. Amalek came and attacked them from behind. And when they were done, they got destroyed. Because God turned around and said, remember what they have done. And they got destroyed for nothing. So here we are. When God is giving you instructions to forgive your siblings, hmm? there is a journey of destiny that we have been walking, that personally I have been walking, where the Lord, he starts by drawing you. And because he has drawn you, you, you think that you're the, the most special one in the family, isn't it? You're the pathfinder. And yes, indeed, you are the what? Pathfinder. But as you cut away the bushes... He begins to say, oh, now that past, this, this, your sibling, sibling X, they are the one who hold the gate of wealth. You first are like, hey, wait, I thought I was the gate of wealth. And said, like, no, that sibling who you're still struggling with, they are, they are the gate of wealth. Ha, you're like, Jesus. Yeah, you mean I must forgive? If I'm, if I'm entering this gate, I must first forgive? Yeah, you're quarreling with them, but they are the gate of what? Wealth. This person here, hmm? they are the gate of this. You're like, Jesus. But I thought all things were contained. Like, no. Everybody has their what? Value and their place. So again, hearken to the instruction. Prof stands at the altar. And says, the youth, listen to the elders. Hmm? You might be running, but the button, if you don't have the button, you won't win the race. My friend, take it very seriously. Check your hand for the button. <laughs> Check your hand for the what? The button. There are people who've been disqualified. Have you ever seen these, these races? That guy starts running, but he has not received the what? From the previous person. <laughs> And it doesn't count if you have not what? Even if the other, your neighbor is slow, if he receives his button and just reaches before you, he will still what? Win. So receive the button. So for you, your, prayer, your question in prayer should be saying, Lord, okay, first of all, which button am I receiving? Two, have I received it? Three, how do I receive it? And then Aunt Judith comes and talks about the value in the family. So now, for you in your youth, you've been thinking, ah, these guys are old, they've not, they've not, uh, we, we will achieve more. That is true, you will achieve more. You will achieve more. But it will be difficult to achieve more if you're starting from zero. But if you're starting from eh, level ground, eh, if, you first have, if you first have to cut the bush, it is difficult. But if the bush has been cleared, the road has been tarmac, 
just enter your Lamborghini and drive. You get? Eh? Those are the things. So those are things you hold in your mind. So, it comes to hearkening to the word. Hearkening to the instruction. And so when we are done praying, when you pray, ask for an instruction. If you've not been asking for instructions, ask for what? Instructions. If you're not hearing instructions, you just turn around and look, go through the summons again, check, ask the Holy Spirit to just help you revise and say, where have I? Is there something I have not yet done? And then you do it for the sake of just doing homework and you finish. And then see what the Lord releases to you. But let your heart be supple before the Lord that you may indeed hearken to his voice and obey. And obey. The image that was firm in my mind here. And I please help me find it. I'm looking for the man that was healed. The one that he said, get up and walk. Because there are many that he said, pick up your mat and walk. But the one that was lowered. Can someone find me the scripture? I did not mark it for myself. Matthew or Luke? It's in Luke. Okay, the version we're looking for is in Luke. Luke, which chapter? Luke chapter 5, verse 17. So that is the image that the Lord gave me. And really, yes, and he came to pass on a certain day that is a teaching that there were and behold, men, 18, behold, men brought in a bed, a man which were taken with palsy, and they sought means to bring him in and to lay him before him. And when they could not find by what way they might bring him in because of the multitude, they went upon the housetop and let him down through the tiling with his couch into the midst before Jesus. And when he saw their faith, he said unto him, man, thy sins are forgiven thee. And the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this which speaketh blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answering said unto them, What reason ye in your hearts? Whether it is easier to say, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Rise up and walk. But that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power upon earth to forgive sins. He said unto the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise and take up thy couch and go into thine house. Instruction. Sins had been forgiven. And then the Lord gives a what? An instruction of healing. And immediately he rose up before them and took up that whereon he lay and departed to his own house, glorifying God. And they were all amazed and they glorified God and were filled with fear saying, we have seen strange things today. Amen. It is a glorious story to hear, isn't it? Imagine the man had stayed on the mat. Just imagine that for a moment. Would the words of Jesus still be true? Yes. Did Jesus have the power to forgive sins? Yes. Had he just released a word of healing? Yes. So that part was not going to change. But imagine the man had not picked up his mat. He would have remained a cripple. But he believed. And because he believed, he acted on the instruction. So how do you know that you have not yet believed? You've not acted on the 
instruction. Hmm? That's how I know. Sometimes, you know, we walk around and say, oh, the Lord has said this. Hmm? You start knocking people and say, you know, the Lord said this about you and they, they give you an instruction. And you know, you're mingling among people. And some of you receive instructions out of you guys online, let's, let me just tell you, there are things that happen in person. So you, you're there moving, you've come, you've served, you've finished, then someone comes and says, hey, the Lord visited me, this and this, he showed me this. He says, do this. And you hear, and you're like, hmm. And you walk away and do nothing. And you're there in your prayer room. Oh Lord, speak unto me. Oh Lord, I need to hear you. Oh Lord, answer me. He already met you. But because the vessel didn't talk the way you wanted, first of all, it was not pastor. Eh? It was not pastor. Pastor didn't call you and say, Jonah, do this. Eh? Even, even harder are those instructions. I was just telling someone, you know, there are people who come and they say, you know, don't you think? <laughs> there are some people when they say, don't you think? You better think very well. <laughs> think very well and say, God, is what they have said true? Must I do it? But know that the Lord is speaking to us in various ways. And be expectant to hear him. When you hear a word, quickly take it back and say, Lord, is this something I should do? And as soon as your spirit picks it up and says, yes, don't hesitate. Do it. All right? Can we agree on that? Basics. Let's just what? Agree on that. That even for me, it's important. He said, come and perform the, I use the word perform because there's a place where it was hard. So there is, you have to actually perform. Hmm? You bring yourself to do it. And while you do it, you act and say, Lord, it is hard for me. But I am doing it anyway. Because I believe you have spoken and when you speak, you are mighty to save. And understand that every instruction of the Lord comes with the power of God. Comes with the power of God. You did not fast in vain. You do not serve in vain. You do not forgive in vain. You do not pray in vain. In every instruction, there is grace and there is salvation. So you're looking for speed. You're looking for an upgrade. It's time to be obedient in all things. Not just in some. In all things things of the Lord. Even when you have a very good reason. When the Lord speaks, hearken. And hearken quickly. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for the call to hear you we thank you for the grace to be obedient. We thank you that you never give up on us. We thank you that you are always kind. You are always merciful. We thank you that you, are, you give so many chances. You never stop giving us chances. We thank you that even when we fail, your mercy is available to us. And so, Lord, we, we apologize say we are sorry and we bring repentance before you in sincerity I know that I do and I pray that your people will be drawn to that place of understanding of what it means to break your heart 
when we don't listen and when we fail to obey. And so, Lord, even as we come before you, saying once more, give us a chance to be obedient to you. Speak again, Lord, and we shall do. Speak again, Lord, and we shall do. Speak again, Lord, and we shall do. You have called us to give, we shall give. You've called us to forgive, we shall forgive. You've called us to put away from us all sin, all malice, all, all terrible, all sorts of uncleanness. We shall do. You've called us to pray. We shall pray. You've called us to pray at hours we don't like. We ask for the grace to arise. You've called us, O oh Lord, to be peaceful at all times. To praise at all times. We shall do. Even when we don't see the thing that we want to praise you for yet. We shall do. So Lord, thank you. We thank you for the grace that you've given us in the places where we have been obedient. We celebrate you, God. We don't celebrate ourselves. We celebrate you, God. We say thank you, Holy Spirit. We say thank you. Thank you. Today, once more, we choose you. We choose fellowship with you. Enable us, O oh Lord, to be those that truly love you. To be those that seek your heart in honesty, in sincerity, in absolute faith. That we may be known as the lovers of God everywhere we go. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen.